I wish you can clap those hands better. It's worthy of our praise, y'all. Come on, come on, clap those hands better for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Somebody, come on, can you say the Lord is good? Say it again, the Lord is good. If you know that the Lord is good to you, wave your hand and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, you may be comfortably seated. I welcome you to the house of the Lord. This is the Tabernacle of Worship, Church of All Nations. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. How many of us are glad to be here tonight? I wish you can shout it better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ought to be glad to be in God's house. Amen. Because it is the most important place on earth. It is the most powerful place on earth. And so it is a privilege to be present in God's house. And I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ, who led you here tonight, has something prepared for you. Do you believe that as well? Can you shout amen? Come on, I say shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. And this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Somebody shout glory. glory. Blessed be God. And it is our year of scaling new heights and charting new frontiers. Can you shout amen? amen. Say after me, this year, I'm going to do what I've never done before. And go where I've never gone before. Say it again. This year, I'm going to do what I've never done before. And go where I've never gone before. All by the power of the Holy Spirit. Wave your hand and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Blessed be God. And it is our month, our season of the days of heaven on earth. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say the days of heaven on earth. Say it loud, the days of heaven on earth. You're going to come with testimonies in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Hallelujah. Once again, I welcome you to the presence of the Lord, the house of the Lord. I'd like to welcome our online audience. God bless you. I trust you came with your Bible to church tonight. Hallelujah. And something to take notes with. Hey, I said, did you come with your Bible and something to take notes with? May I see them? Just wave them because the way you're looking, I'm not sure. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Thank you. Thank you. If you need a Bible, just lift your hand up and an usher will hand one to you. Praise the Lord. It's always good to come to the house of the Lord with our textbook. Amen. And our textbook is the Bible. Praise the Lord. And every good student always comes with a pencil and a writing pad to use to write. Amen? Like they say, the shortest pencil is longer than the longest memory. Oh, I wish you could have shouted amen there. Amen. So, uh, let's be of the habit of writing, taking notes, and turning, participating, because it is not the spectator that is blessed, it is the participator who is blessed. Can you say a glorious amen? amen? All right, if we're ready, let's go ahead and bow our heads in prayer, and we'll go right into the lesson for tonight. Go ahead, bow your heads, close your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we're so grateful and thankful to you for this incredible gathering tonight. We've not gathered before a man. We've gathered before you, our Father, the Almighty creator of the heavens and the earth. And therefore, my Father, as your vessel for tonight, I stand under the cross of Calvary, and I hide myself in the blood of Jesus. Though your people look at me, they don't see me, they see you. Though they listen to me, they don't hear me, they hear you. Therefore, my Father, come and possess me afresh, spirit, soul, and body. And let the words that will come out of me tonight be not mine, but yours. And let these words bring edification, exaltation, comfort, direction, health, and healing to your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I decree and I declare that your word shall flow freely, unhindered and uninterrupted, 
by any outside force. It shall enter into your people and make them what it talks about in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for your mercy on my life. I thank you for your mercy on your people. I thank you for your mercy on the service tonight. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. If you agree with that prayer, can you shout a resounding amen? amen? All right, let's turn our Bibles to one of our texts for the series, Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 through 21. The book of Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 through 21. And so a few weeks ago, we began a series entitled The Necessity of God's Word to the Kingdom Citizen. The Necessity of God's Word to the kingdom citizen. Can you make that statement? This is part three. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as citizens of the kingdom, we cannot do without the word of God. If we do without the word of God, that will ensure that we will never tap into our divine abilities. We will never access the God who is in us and who is us. And so the word of God is a must if we are going to awaken the divine nature that is within us. And hence, this series. So I want us to look at Philippians chapter 3 and verse 17 through 21. If you are there, say amen. It says, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as he have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame. Who mind earthly things. Can you say who mind earthly things. So, the Apostle Paul is telling us not to follow these category uh, of individuals. Now, verse 20. For our conversation. Can you say conversation? conversation. The word conversation is literally citizenship. For our citizenship is in heaven. For our citizenship is in heaven. For our citizenship is in heaven heaven. Can you say that out loud? In other words, our ethnicity is in heaven. Our origin is in heaven. We come from heaven. We hail from heaven. Heaven is our place of citizenship. What a marvel. What a marvel. Watch this. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21 who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Can you say my citizenship is in heaven. Now I want to read Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 from the NIV. The NIV is going to clarify it. The New International Version, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. It said, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen. Say, my citizenship is in heaven. And so, in talking about the necessity of God's word to the kingdom citizen, ladies and gentlemen, we have to realize that since we come from heaven, since we originate from heaven, we have to follow the modus operandi of heaven. We cannot live our lives according to the dictates of the world system. It will not work if a citizen of heaven lives his or her life according to the dictates of the earth, according to the dictates of mere humanity, it will ensure that they will never live the divine life. They will live the mere human life, the life that is subservient to the kingdom of darkness. And so it would behoove us
to pursue the word of God, to make the word of God the focus of our existence. I awaken in you tonight a fresh hunger for God's word. I say I awaken in you tonight a fresh hunger for God's word in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, Colossians chapter 3, beginning to read from verse 1. So it is essential that we understand this most important foundation that we hail from heaven and that we are citizens of heaven and that we are like our father Jehovah God. We are divine in essence. Colossians chapter 3 beginning to read from verse 1. Blessed be God. Oh! Somebody shout glory! glory. The Lord is with you. I said the Lord is with you. I said the Lord Jehovah is with you. Uh, do you know what that means? The Bible says, uh, if God be for you, no one can be against you. I said, the Lord is with you and he's for you. Can you shout the glory and say amen? He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I shall be with you always. That's why I say always. always. Always means all the time, even until the end of the age. Clap your hands together for our Lord Jesus Christ while you're shouting hallelujah. What a good God we serve. What a great God we serve. Colossians chapter 3, beginning from verse 1. If you're there, say amen. amen. Now watch this. If ye then be risen with Christ, if ye then be risen with Christ, so the prerequisite is that we be risen with Christ in order for the next statement to count. If ye then be risen with Christ, how many people who have been risen with Christ are here tonight? I wish you can wave that hand vigorously while you're shouting hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, what a privilege to, be, to have been risen with Christ. Then, that means the next statement concerns you. Seek those things which are above. Wow. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you have been risen with Christ, the Bible says that you seek those things which are above. Now, if you have not been risen with Christ, you don't have to seek those things which are above. Because if you are not risen with Christ, that means you are not a citizen of heaven. That means your country is not heaven. Your country is the earth. So you can seek earthly things. But if you have been risen with Christ, then your focus, your pursuit should be heavenly things. Are you getting this? Look at it. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Can you say where Christ sits? Say it again, where Christ sits. Now, in case you have forgotten, where Christ sits is also where you sit. I repeat, where Christ sits is also where you sit. Hallelujah. This is beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. Verse 2, set your affection on things above. Can you say, set your affection? In other words, let your mind, let your mentality be focused. Set your affection, your love on things above, not on things on the earth. So a Christian who is seated in the heavens with Christ Jesus, who is risen with Christ, but set their affection on earthly things, will live as if they are not born again. The divine life, the supernatural life, will elude them. Why? Even though they are born again, their affection is not on heavenly things, but on earthly things. And so they live like mere earthly beings. But that shall not be you. 
I said, that shall not be you. I said, that shall not be you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say after me, my affection. Uh, everybody talk. Say, my affection are on heavenly things. Can you say amen? The Bible says, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you're going to experience heavenly things, then you must set your mind on heavenly things. In heaven, there are no sick people. So when your affection is set on heaven, uh, it will ensure that you will never be sick another day in your life. In heaven, there are no poor people. When you set your affection on heavenly things, it will ensure that your days of poverty will forever be over. In heaven, there are no oppressed people. So when you set your affection on heavenly things, uh, it will ensure that you will never ever be oppressed another day in your life. Are you getting this? We always go in the direction of the way we think. So the other question is, Pastor, how do I set my affection on things above and not on things on the earth? How do I do this? By focusing on the word of God. Because God's word, brother and sister, has captured the operations of heaven. Hallelujah. And so whenever you read the word, whenever you meditate the word, whenever you listen to the word, you are getting acquainted with the culture of heaven. You are setting your affection, your mind on heavenly things. So the things that make others cry will not make you cry. Because in heaven, we don't cry, we govern, we rule, we dominate. Uh, the ruler in you is rising big now. I said, the ruler in you is rising big now in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you clap those hands together for the Lord Jesus while you're saying amen, 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 amen. <laughs> Say, the ruler in me is rising big within me. Can you say it audaciously? Say, the ruler in me is rising big within me. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Blessed be God. Can you say amen? amen? So, as a citizen of heaven, as a Christian, rather, I want you to understand that heaven is your country. I say heaven is your country. And every country has a constitution. The word of God is our constitution. And you and I are emissaries, ambassadors to this earth. Uh, somebody say, I know who I am. I say, you and I are ambassadors to this earth. We are heaven's representatives here on earth. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ said, you are in the world, but you're not of the world. You are here. By the mandate of your country, heaven, to colonize this realm. Oh, clap those hands while you're shouting hallelujah. Oh! Can you shout glory? glory? I said, can you shout glory? glory? Heaven is our country. We hail from heaven. There has never been a kind like you. You know, they talk about uh, aliens. That Christian person who has realized who he or she is in Christ is the true alien. Praise the Lord. Because there is nothing in your spirit that is like earthly men. Your spirit is wall to wall Jehovah. Wall to wall Jehovah. And so you have his life, you, you have his essence, you, you have his nature. And so the more 
you read the word. You, the more you study the word, the more this nature rises big within you. Why is it rising big within you? Because the word of God has reconfigured your mind. And so your mind begins to harmonize with your spirit. And once that harmony is in place, then what is in you will begin to effortlessly flow out of you. As you're sitting where you're seated, you are loaded with God. Everything about your spirit essence is success. Everything about your spirit essence is prosperity. Everything about your spirit essence is dominion. Everything. And that is why the word was given to us. So that we can begin to understand who we are, what we have, and what we can do. The necessity of God's word to the kingdom citizen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say, can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Set your affection on things above. Look at it. As a matter of fact, I'd like us all to read Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you there? Yeah. I say, are you there? Yeah. All right, let's read out loud. One, two, go. Can you read it again louder this time? Set your affection. Let your mind be set. Let your focus be on heavenly things. Things from above. Joy is an operation from above. Praise and worship is an operation from above. Singing is an operation from above. Clapping you just did is an operation from above. Engage these operations because they allow us to access heaven. Can you say amen? amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those who come to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Ladies and gentlemen, faith gives us access to heaven. I say faith gives us access to heaven. And what is faith? Confidence in the word of God. Belief on God's word. Acting on the word of God. That is faith. Now, I want you to understand something about our country, heaven. Heaven is a place. It is a geographical location. But it is also a realm that is everywhere. I repeat, heaven is a place. It's a geographical location. Because when you study the book of Revelation, it talks much about the location of heaven. But heaven is also a realm. It is everywhere. The distance between you and heaven is faith. I repeat. The distance between you and heaven is faith. So you may be anywhere on planet earth. Any day, any time. And by faith, access heaven. Can you say amen? amen? The Bible says you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the company of innumerable angels. Then it says you have come to the general assembly, the church, the church, the church of the firstborn. So anywhere people gather together to praise God, heaven has invaded that place. Can you say amen? amen? So the distance between you and your country is faith. That is why in a blink of an eye, in a blink of an eye, before you blink, angels have appeared. Where did they come from? Because they have always been here. They are in the realm that you cannot see 
It's an invisible realm. But you can access it by faith. Jacob laid somewhere and he had a vision and he saw angels ascending and descending. Notice the Bible that did not say they were descending and ascending. No, they were ascending and descending. That means they were already here on earth. That is why the word of God is so important. There are so many things in God's word that when you don't know, the enemy will oppress you, will take you for a ride, will kick you around like a soccer ball. And so as we study God's word, our faith is activated to access the realm of heaven, the realm of God, our country. Can you say amen? amen. So from now on, carry yourself as the citizen of heaven. Amen. 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 Carry yourself as a citizen of heaven. Let your mentality be that of heaven. The citizens of heaven don't complain. We don't murmur. Why? We serve a God who is too big. I said we serve a God who is too big. A Christian who murmurs does not know who their God is. Hence, you're murmuring. The moment you understand who God is, murmur dies, complaint dies. Can you say amen? amen? That is why God was angry with the children of Israel who murmured against him in the wilderness. He said, upon everything I've done for you, you still don't know who I am. Well, just as you've said in my ear, so shall it be, you will die in the wilderness. And they all, that generation all perished in the wilderness. Why? They murmured against God. Murmuring, complaining is an expression of unbelief. Amen. I say murmuring, complaining is an expression of unbelief. If you want to hurt God, complain. I mean, it can't really be hurt. It's is, is beyond that, but just to say, put it in a, in a term that you can understand. If, if you want to make him displeased, complain. Trust in him. Belief in him pleases him. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody, can you wave your hand and shout hallelujah? I said wave your hand and shout hallelujah. And so don't forget that heaven is your country. That you come from heaven. That you were born from above. Even though you're in this earth, do not mistake yourself to think that you're an earthly being. You're a heavenly being. Can you say a glorious amen? amen. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. First Peter chapter 1. And verse 23. I'd like us all to read this together, please. Praise the Lord. Oh, the glory of the Lord is on you. I said, the glory of the Lord is on you. His goodness is on you. His hand is on you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. They shall come against you one way, but they shall flee before you seven ways. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you shout the glory and say amen? amen? This is the heritage of the children of the Lord. All right, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23, not chapter 2. Chapter 1 and verse 23. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. All right, let's read out loud. One, two, go. Did you see that? Somebody shout glory. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, not of perishable, destructible seed, 
but of incorruptible, imperishable, indestructible seed, which is the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, something that cannot die. Now, look at the next statement. Which liveth and abideth forever. Can you say, lives and abide forever. Ladies and gentlemen, something eternal gave birth to you. Something that cannot die, that cannot perish, that is not subject to corruption, to decay, gave birth to you. The word of God. And in case you don't know who the word of God is, the Bible says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So God gave birth to you. Stop cowering. Stop having low self-esteem. Begin to realize who you are. Awake to who you are. And take flight. Look at it. Being born again. Not of corruptible seed. Not of perishable seed. But incorruptible. The word of God. So a seed that can die, a seed that can perish, did not give birth to us. The mere human seed dies. When your mother gave birth to you, your mother gave birth to the part of you that can die, that can be corrupted, that can be destroyed, that is subject to decay. But then, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you heard the word of the kingdom and you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, another seed gave birth to you. This seed cannot die, cannot perish, cannot be destroyed. This seed is everlasting. Clap those hands together for Jesus Christ. While you're shouting, hallelujah. And so, whenever we study the word of God, the word of God reveals this part of us, this part of our being that does not die, cannot die. It reveals to us the possibilities that are within our reach. And so, when I study the word of God, when I read the word of God, when I meditate on the word of God, when I listen to the word of God, I am on a search to discover who I am, what I have, and what I can do. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Not what my teachers told me. No, my teachers don't even know they are right from your left. Praise the Lord. Not what the secular schools taught me or Bible schools taught me. No, what the word teaches. It reveals your true identity. Hallelujah. The word of God reveals your true ability. See, I'll never ever be broke another day in my life. I say, can you say, I'll never ever be broke another day in my life. That's right. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abided forever. Now, I told us last Wednesday and the Wednesday before that, that what gave birth to you is what also sustains you. Amen? Amen? What gave birth to you is what also sustains you. The trees come out of the ground. In order for the trees to be sustained, they have to stay connected to the ground. Is that right? When you uproot a plant, what happens to that plant? It dies. Why? Why? It has been separated from its life, its source, which is the ground. Fish came out of the water. They were born out of the water. 
And so they are sustained by the water. When you take a fish out of the water, what happens to it? It dies. Why? It is separated from source. When a child is born, when a baby is born, that baby has to stay connected with its mother. Because it is through the body of the mother that the baby continues to be nourished and sustained. Can you say amen? That is how it is, ladies and gentlemen. We are born of the word. In order for us to live this divine life. I'm not talking about your physical life. Your physical life is sustained by something separate. But I'm talking about your true essence, the true you, the real you. In order for you to remain connected to source, to life, you must be a student of the word of God. Because you were born of the word. You came out of the word and thus sustained of the word. When I understood this many years ago, ah, I began to approach the word of God with a different mentality. I approached the word of God like a man who approaches food. Food nourishes your physical body. The word of God nourishes eternal life. So you see, a Christian who does not have a lifestyle of taking in the word of God is a Christian guaranteed is living beneath their true capabilities and potential. Guaranteed. Praise the Lord. Guaranteed. And so what oppresses the unbelievers is oppressing them. What the unbelievers fear, they fear. Because they are no different than the unbeliever. What makes you a Christian? It's not that you are born again. No. Being born again is just the first step. What makes you a Christian is that the word of God governs the way you think. Hallelujah. As I'm here today, I do not fear sudden death. I do not fear accidental death, premature death, violent death. Why? Pastor, why don't you fear that? Because in that area, my mind has ascended beyond any equivocation. I know I cannot die prematurely. I know it. It's not an if or a but. I know it. It is a knowing. Just like I know I'm a man. No one can confuse me that I'm not a man. That is how I know. I cannot die prematurely. Suddenly, accidentally, or violently. I know it. By the word of God. Can you say amen? amen. It is amazing. Clap your hands, shout, do something. <laughs> Somebody shout glory. glory. I said, can you shout glory? glory? Ladies and gentlemen, ah, the life that you have is magnificent. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Hearts have not been able to conceptualize what you are capable of. But this year uh, will begin to manifest. I said this year we are going to begin to manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you shout hallelujah? So what gave birth to you is what sustains you. Never forget it. What gave birth to you is what sustains you. I pray for you tonight that you have a fresh hunger for the word of God. Say after me, the necessity of God's word to the kingdom citizen. Say it again, the necessity of God's word 
to the kingdom citizen. And so when you understand that you are not like everyone else, when you understand that you come from heaven, then your priorities will be different than earthly men. Your pursuits will be different than earthly men. Amen. Amen. There is an enormous responsibility that has been placed on us. Ladies and gentlemen, there is an enormous responsibility that has been placed on us. Jesus Christ calls us the light of the world and the salt of the earth. You're not here for yourself. You're here for others. So when you begin to manifest your true essence and your true identity and ability, many will come into the liberty of the kingdom. Say after me, I'm a lover of God and a deliverer of men. Can you say, I'm a lover of God and a deliverer of men? The responsibility is enormous, ladies and gentlemen. Even as I speak, I feel the weight of it. It's enormous. But Christians who think like earthly beings have not prioritized this calling, this most awesome calling. And so when you regard the pursuit of the Christian, just oppose the pursuit of the earthly man, there is no difference. Something is wrong. How can I be a citizen of heaven and have the same pursuits as an earthly being? Ladies and gentlemen, I pray that your priorities will change beginning now. As I pray that your priorities will change beginning now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So our pursuit is the pursuit of our father Jehovah. He wants sons, many of them, to come into the kingdom. And so as we understand who we are, what we have, and what we can do, in whatever place we go they will be magnetized to us they will be drawn to us they will be attracted to us they won't be able to tell what is attracting them to us but it is the life of God that is big within us that they are drawn to that they are attracted to the life of God is a force field that magnetizes, that draws everything within its sphere of influence. There are many who are oppressed by the kingdom of darkness. They don't know what to do. They have done everything that earthly men have prescribed and yet they are still bound their solution must come from above. And you are their solution. Because you are from above. The earnest expectation of God's creation waits for the manifestation, the revealing, the unveiling of the sons of God. It's time for you to be unveiled. I say it's time for you to be unveiled. It's time. I'm no longer going to be preoccupied with mundane things. 
things that are irrelevant to our father. They are just absolutely irrelevant. He wants to use us as an arrow, as an axe, to tear down, to throw down, to destroy the works of darkness, and then to build and to plant heaven's reality here on earth. I wish you could have clapped those hands together for Jesus Christ while you're shouting hallelujah. <laughs> We have an enormous responsibility, ladies and gentlemen. We are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. Can you say, I know who I am? Psalm 119, verse 105, and then verse 130. Psalm 119, verse 105, and then verse 130. Blessed be God. There is an awakening taking place within you right now. I said, there is an awakening taking place within you right now. Amen. You're waking up to who you are. I said, you are waking up to who you are. I said, you are waking up to who you are Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. This is what the word of God does. The word of God wakes us up from our slumber. Yeah, it wakes us up from our slumber. Watch this. Verse... Psalm 119, verse 105. Are you there? It said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When you're, when you're walking through, let's say, a wooded area, a dark path, you need illumination. You need a torchlight, flashlight, a lamp. The word of God illuminates your path. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. So the, without the word of God guaranteed, that individual is living in darkness. They are walking in darkness. They are like a man in a dark room. They are trying to find their way. And so they are bumping and kicking and falling and getting back up. Why? They don't have light. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God gives you the intelligence to know where to go and how to go. It has nothing to do with theology. It has nothing to do with religion. It has everything to do with life, apprehending the life of God. There is a way that seems right unto a man. Earthly men proclaim this way. They campaign about this way. It seems right to them, but it leads to destruction and they have no idea. And so they are going that way and they are all falling into the pit. But not so for the believer because we have the light of the word of God. And so when we look at it, we say, uh-uh. That way leads to destruction. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When you're walking in darkness, you don't know where you're going. Whether you're going into danger, you don't know. But the word illuminates your path and allows you to know, ah, there is danger ahead. I better go this way. So earth men are being destroyed every day because you're walking the path of darkness. It seems right to them, but they don't know on the other side it's a voracious lion looking to eat them, to devour them. Hallelujah. So a Christian who jokes with the word of God is joking with a divine heritage. I repeat, a Christian who jokes with the word of God is joking with their divine heritage. And many Christians are joking with their divine heritage. Blessed be God. Now verse 130. 
Psalm 119, 130. Can we all read this together, please? Can you say amen? Are you there? All right, out loud. One, two, go. The entrance of thy word gives light. Can you say light? light. Say it again, light. light. Now, the first light that was spoken of in 105, verse 105, is a light without. This light is light within. The entrance of thy words gives light. It gives understanding unto the simple. When the word enters into you, it gives you understanding. Can you say understanding? Say it again, understanding. A man of, a, of understanding knows how to relate with people. How he relates with this one is different than the way he relates with this other one. That is an individual with understanding. He's able to examine characters. He's able to examine attitudes, behaviors. And be able by the word, the understanding of God's word that is working in them to know how to relate with each individual. It is amazing. It is amazing. Can you say amen? amen. The entrance of their word gives light. It gives understanding. When you visit someone, do you have the understanding to know how to behave yourself in that environment? Do you have the understanding to be able to know the protocol in that environment? Because every environment has its own unique protocol. Are you listening to this? understanding unto the simple. The word simple is the word stupid. There are many stupid Christians. Daft. Idiots. Because they don't have the word of God in them. They talk anyhow. Behave anyhow. Act anyhow. They are simple. They are simplistic. In their understanding. But the word can remove that. Wave your hand and shout hallelujah. I said wave your hand and shout hallelujah. I said wave your hand and shout hallelujah. Ah, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to be a successor. One thing you have to master. Is how to deal with people. Because there is no success without people. I said, there is no success without people. If you're taking note, it's a good thing to write down. There is no success without people. You want to be a success in life? I'm talking about like uh, success that is beyond this realm. You have to understand how to relate with people. How you relate with Miss A is not how you relate with Miss B. They are different, two different people. By the understanding of God's word, by the spirit of God in you, you'll be able to tell, all right, this is exactly how I'm going to behave with this one. And when it comes to this one, this is how I'll behave. You master people, you've mastered life. I said you master people, you have mastered life. It's a good place to clap those hands together while you're shouting. Hallelujah! I said, can you clap those hands and shout hallelujah? The entrance of thy words, the word of God has its own intelligence to tell you how to relate with different people and different organizations. When you enter into an organization, you should know how to carry yourself by the intelligence of God's word that is at work in you.
you're going to a function and the dress code is not specified. How do you dress there? The wisdom and the understanding of God's word will tutor you how to dress there. Can you say amen? amen. No wonder Jesus told Martha, he said, only one thing is needful that Mary has found referring to the word of God. Only one thing is necessary. You get that one thing, you get everything. Because that one thing will avail you to every other thing. I repeat, any Christian who jokes with the word of God is joking with your divine heritage. Can you say amen? amen. I say, can you say amen? amen? You're getting dressed and the Holy Spirit says, do not wear that tie, wear this color. Yeah, the one you picked is fine, but Wear this one because this particular color I want you to wear. The person you are about to meet likes that color. That is their favorite color. How would you have known that without the intelligence of the word of God? We come from a nation and this nation has a way we behave. It is a nation of royals, of aristocrats. It is a nation of dignity and dignified individuals. You're coming awake to who you are. I say you're coming awake to who you are in the name of Jesus Christ. It is wonderful. The entrance of thy words gives light, illumination. It gives intelligence. I've always wondered, people say they are Christians. And they're getting F's, C's and F's. That is no Christianity, that's religion. Because vital Christianity gives you intelligence. Amen. Amen. Vital Christianity teaches you how to live a clean life. Keeps your house clean and your car clean and, and you look clean. Tell me that you're a Christian and your mouth is smelling. Go brush your teeth first before you come back and say you're a Christian. I know it sounds funny, but it's a reality. People have bastardized the name of Christianity. It's not Christianity, it's religion. Can you say amen? In our country, we are clean people. In our culture, we are neat people. We don't talk anyhow. We talk with dignity. We carry ourselves with respect. Blessed be God. I wish you could have clapped those hands together for Jesus Christ right there. Praise the Lord. Say after me, the necessity of God's word to the kingdom citizen. So thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That is a word without. It allows you to navigate through life. But then there is a word that affects within. The entrance of thy word gives light. So as you're seated here in this classroom, listening to what you're listening, when the word enters, ah, it will change your character. A word that has not entered cannot change your character. 
That is why people come to church every week and they are not changed. Because when the world is going, they are somewhere else. Some of them are on Facebook, others are on Instagram, others are on TikTok and uh, whatever nonsense and stupidity that they're in. And so every week they hear the word because it has not entered. Their stupid character is still there. But when the word enters, one thing that changes, that revolutionizes, is character. Stupidity flies away because the word, when it enters, it gives you intelligence. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Ah, say after me, I love the word of God. Can you say, I love the word of God? One time, I discovered in the book of Romans, it said, do not let evil overcome you, but overcome evil with good. Huh. Overcome evil with good. That means if someone treats me with an evil treatment, I should reciprocate with good. And when I reciprocate with good, I have overcome that evil. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is, an, that is an intelligence I got from the word of God. The world system teaches someone does something to you, find a way to get them back. According to our constitution, according to our government, that is antithetical to a life of victory. Because you cannot overcome evil with evil. If someone does you evil and you respond in kind, you are perpetuating that evil done to you. But in order to disarm that evil, reciprocate with good. And you have disarmed that evil. That is intelligence from our kingdom. And so since that day, ah, I, I have no art in my heart against any. I am very quick to forgive, quick to release and let go. And God fights for me because vengeance is his. Can you say amen? amen. Vengeance is his. The entrance of thy word, it changes the way you behave, the way you think. Praise the Lord. Hosea 4, 6. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The necessity of God's word to the kingdom citizen. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, and verse 6. If you're there, say Amen. Few of us are not there yet. Are you there now? I say, are you there now? If you're there, shout a resounding hallelujah. hallelujah. It says, my people are destroyed. For what? <laughs> are you sure that's what it say? Not, not that the devil is so powerful. Hey, talk to me. Not that demons and witches and wizards are so powerful. Why are God's people destroyed? Are you sure it says that? If a demon has power over you in a certain area, it's because that is an area where you lack knowledge, where you do not have understanding. A demon cannot have access to your life until you have given it that access. So if you shut the door, there is no way the devil can access your life. 
That's what the Bible says, give no place to the devil. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The reason for the destruction of God's people is because they lack knowledge in an area. And because they lack knowledge in that area, they do not know how to act. They do not know how to behave. And because they don't know how to act and behave, they behave the wrong way and the door is open for the enemy to come in. Just like what I just taught you concerning overcome evil with good. How many Christians that you know? Perhaps you used to be that Christian. Someone does something to you, oh, he's, ah, I'll get them back, I'll get them back. Not knowing that is actually opening the door to the devil in your life. So a lack of knowledge is what destroys people, not the devil. The devil has zero power over you until you give him your power to oppress you with. Are you getting this? So you maintain your authority by forgiving people. By having art against no one. By living in harmony. You live a life that is stress free. A life that is full of health. Vitality, vim, vigor, energy. A life that is buoyant with God's presence. Can you say amen? How could we attain to this life without the word of God? Like the saying goes, if you know better, you will do better. Can you say amen? amen. If you know better, you will do better. That is why we teach the word of God. So that Christians can stop living like they are unbelievers. And begin to live according to the dictates, the constitution of heaven, our country, our true country. Blessed be God. I'm going to continue from here next time. Go ahead, rejoice in the Lord. Look at you. Can you rejoice? Come on, clap those hands and shout hallelujah. Please bow your heads, close your eyes, and appreciate Jesus for his word and for his spirit tonight. Lord Jesus, we're so grateful and thankful to you for the impartation of your word and of your spirit. You're so good and you're so kind. You're so good and you're so kind. We love you, Lord. We love you. The necessity of God's word to the kingdom citizen. Lord, give us fresh hunger for your word. That on a daily basis, we will embrace your word. We will read it and study it and meditate on it and listen to it and speak it. That grace is on us afresh now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please, all head bowed, eyes closed, nobody walking. If you're here tonight in this audience, or you're watching us on Facebook, on YouTube, or you're listening to us on radio, and you say, Pastor, I'm not a Christian. I'm not born again, but I want to be. Brother, sister, if this is you, please pray this prayer with us from your heart. Pray, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you're God. I believe you came to earth in human body. You died for my sins. You were buried. On the third day, you rose victorious. And now you're forever alive. Come into my heart. Save my spirit. Be my Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. With the evidence of praying in tongues. I am born again. I am a new creation in Christ. Give me the grace to serve you. All the days of my life. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Would you put those hands together for Jesus Christ? Come on, y'all. Clap those hands and rejoice. Hallelujah. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. All right, let's go ahead and worship the Lord with our substance. How many of us are excited about giving, giving to God here tonight? Shout hallelujah. All right, even an offering envelope, just lift your hand up and an usher, a smiling usher will hand one to you. If in that offering envelope, just lift your hand up and a smiling usher will hand one to you. Hallelujah. Brother, can you put all the giving uh, in the, on the secondary screens as well? Thank you, Jesus Christ. So there are several ways to give. You can write a check, make it payable to Tabernacle of Worship. You can give on, uh, on our website, tabernacleofworship.com. You can give on PayPal, on Cash App, and then you can also give with your credit or debit card. Just make sure to write the, the 16, digits, 16 digit numbers, the expiration date, the uh, CVV code on the offering envelope. Honor the Lord with your substance. Can you say that? Loud, everybody. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. So shall your bonds be filled with plenty and your presses shall bust out with new wine. In other words, when you honor God, he becomes obligated to honor you. When you don't honor him, he won't fight you. Hallelujah. Yeah, he won't fight you because, I mean, he doesn't have that time. Hallelujah. When we obey him, we are blessed for obeying him. When we don't obey him, guess what? The enemy has authority over our lives in that area. And so many Christians have willingly allowed the enemy to rule over their finances because they don't tithe, they don't give offerings regularly, they don't sacrifice regularly. And so the enemy has jurisdiction over their finances. And I pray that... More Christians will honor God because the more we honor him with our tithes, our offerings, and our sacrifices, the more we will experience the blessings of God. I told us of a statistics a few weeks ago that only about 20% of Christians tithe. Do you see that connection with how poor Christians are? Oh yeah, there's a connection. Only 20% tithe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will not force you. If you honor him, he will honor you. Amen. If you don't honor him, he will not honor you. That's the way it works. And as your pastor, that is how I present it to you. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to force you because God will never force you. Amen. I present the truth. It's left to you to do the truth. If you obey the truth, you are blessed for obeying the truth. Can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. All right, hold it up as we pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we're so thankful and grateful to you for this incredible opportunity and privilege you have given to us tonight to honor you with our tithes, our offerings, our covenant gatekeepers, and our sacrifices. Lord Jesus, the Bible says that you are our high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Therefore, we bring our tithes and our offerings to you. Receive them, and on our behalf, worship our Father with them. Father, thank you for rebuking the devourer of our sakes. Thank you for redeeming us from the curse of the law, from the curse of the fall, from the curse of the toil, and from all curses. And now we are blessed with a blessing and with the promises of Abraham and of Jehovah God in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, as your church, as we receive these tithes and offerings, breathe upon them, multiply them, and let it be more than enough for the work of the ministry. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Amen. If you agree with that prayer, shout a resounding amen. amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Make sure you're smiling when you give, for he loves a cheerful giver. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Quick announcements. Uh, leaders, please uh, remember that our meeting is this Saturday. Our meeting it's this Saturday here in the sanctuary at 2 p.m. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And uh, don't forget, uh, next Friday the 20th is the 
album release of our dear beloved minister Eunice you somebody shout hallelujah yes it's next Friday 7 p.m. is going to be the release concert can you say amen and the title of the album is Christ in me mark your calendars you are all invited can you say amen, amen. and on the 29th is the Saint fourth celebration for our beloved Pastor Edwin, Sister Victoria, and the kids. Put your hands together, y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so that is the 29th, Sunday the 29th. Please, let's prepare a sacrifice. You know, they're going to uh, Omaha, Nebraska to start a church. And uh, I don't know if you've ever been involved in church planting. It takes a lot a lot of money. Can you say amen? amen? I say, can you say amen? amen? I've asked the leaders of the church to do at least a thousand dollars. Praise the Lord. Can we clap our hands together for the leaders? <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, for the rest of us, do your best. I know that you appreciate this great, great family, uh, Pastor Edwin and his family. I know they've been a major blessing to you. So do your best. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. You know, I won't be surprised if many of you even do more than the $1,000 that I've asked the leaders to do. Can you say glory? glory. I say can you say glory? glory. And uh, let's uh, cook that day and celebrate. It's going to be a glorious time. Can you shout amen? amen. And uh, uh Unbroken Pieces is meeting this Sunday. Come on, put your hands together for Unbroken Pieces. A women empowerment support group that is championed by our own very anointed minister, Del Mia. Put your hands together for her. Look at you. I say clap. You're not looking at me. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. So this Sunday, uh, ladies, please make sure to be a part of it. Spread the word and invite other ladies right after service and the snacks and refreshments shall be served. Stand on your feet. We're going to take the next few minutes to pray. Can you shout hallelujah? I say can you shout hallelujah? Say I receive grace to pray. Talk to me. Say I receive grace to pray. All right. Go ahead. Let's begin to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. The Bible says, for he that speaks in tongues speaks not unto men, but unto God. For no one understands him, how be it in the spirit. Can you say in the spirit? Say it again, in the spirit. He speaketh mysteries, divine secrets, hidden wisdom. Hallelujah. So let's go ahead and begin to declare mysteries right now. Ricada 
Yakaje broko do zoko, ekade broko do vujakade, rikade broko do zukadade, rekade vodo zoko do vodo, ekaje braka da vodo, esko do broko teva, ekade broko do zo, ekade rade vo zoko shakade, ekade broko do vozo, ekaje broko do zukade, rikade braba shakade kade vodo, ekade broko do zo, ebrikada de kade kade, ebrikada de kade kade, rikade vada kade vada, rikade vada kade vada, rikade broko Zokodo, Abracada, Vosokodo, Ikada Brada Bracada, Ikada Brada Bracada, Membrocodo Vosokodo Vodo, Ukada Brade Bracada, Ukada Brade Bracada, Ricada Vosoko Shekada Vede. In Jesus Christ, mighty name. The Bible says, In all your ways, acknowledge the Lord, and He will direct your paths. And so Friday is the album release. I want us to pray that Father. Have your way that day. Have your way that day. Let your spirit uh, rule that day. Let your power rule that day. Let the spirit uh, of excellence rule that day in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and begin to pray. Commit that day into the hands of God. Next Friday, the 20th. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come in next Friday into your hands. The album release of your daughter, my father and my God. We pray for your glory to invade this place. We pray for your power to invade this place. We pray for your mighty Holy Spirit to take charge of the celebration from beginning till end. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, let your glory fall upon the service, the celebration next week, Friday from 7 p.m. Father, let your power be manifest. Let your glory be manifest. Let your hand be upon the service, the celebration in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, mighty name. The Bible says it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. I want us to commit Minister Eunice and her team into God's hands. That they will minister by the energy that the Holy Spirit gives. That they will minister by the power of the mighty Holy Spirit. That as they minister, healings will transpire. Miracles will happen in the name of Jesus Christ. That as they minister, the glory of God shall come down. And people shall be revolutionized for Jesus Christ. Go ahead and begin to pray. Pray. My father and my God. It is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. My father and my God, by your spirit, I am praying that you anoint afresh your daughter, Minister Eunice, and her team. Lord, anoint them afresh. Let them minister by the energy of the Holy Spirit. Let them minister by the energy that only God gives. That as they minister, my father and my God, your people shall be touched. They shall be healed and delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. They shall be an impartation of life, of light, of glory, of power in the name of Jesus Christ. Rekaya broko do zoko do, rikada baka shekalade, mem broko do zoko, ekade broko do zoko do. In Jesus Christ, mighty name.
I want us to pray for Pastor Edwin and his family. They're relocating to Omaha, Nebraska. I want us to ask the Lord to go before them and to go with them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and begin to pray. Pray. Like I have brought code, those of yes, that was so called over the man broke a dog, who's got a da, Rika de Vedes, or Cocayaba, a bracket of Boko, she got a do, he brought the back at their brother, he brought the back at their brother, Rika de Bozo, Koshika, my father, my God. Even as you send your servant and his family to Omaha, Nebraska, Father, go before them and go with them, Father, go before them and go with them, Father, we ask that you go before them and go with them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Reakaya broko dozo kodo, reakaya broko dozo kodo, rika da braka je kada vede, reka da broko da kada vede, ye kaja brana makada, reka ja brana makada, reka da vo dozo kodo vodo, ruka je kada braka de, ruka je kada braka de, reka da vo dozo kodo vodo. Reka broko do zukade, reka broko do zukade, rika de bo joko do broko do, man broko do zukada, ikara da bra pa je kada, reka da vo je kada vede, yes kodo broko kashi kedede. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. And the Lord said to Joshua, I said, Everywhere that the sole of your feet shall step on, that have I given to you. Amen. We're going to pray that even as they step into Omaha, that they will possess that land by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and begin to pray. Pray. My Father and my God, as your servant and his family, Lord, step into Omaha, Nebraska. Father, by your Spirit, they take possession of that land. By your Spirit, they take possession of that land in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you praying? In Jesus Christ, mighty name. Jesus Christ said, no one can come to me except the Father who has sent me draws him. No one can come to me except the Father who has sent me draws him. We're going to pray, Father, you are the one sending them to Omaha. Draw the people to them. Draw the people to them. Draw the people to them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and begin to pray. Pray. Rekaya braka dozo. Yes, kodo broko di bakada de. Irakada brakada brakada. Irakada brakada brakada. Rekada bojo kodo vodo. Are you praying? Rekada vada kada vada. Rekada vada kada vada. Yes, kodo broko do vodo do. Yes, kodo broko do vodo do. Urakade. Urakada kade. Urakade. Urakada kade. Irakada brakada brakada. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are sending your servant and his family to Omaha, Nebraska. You said no one can come to me except the Father who has sent me draws him. Lord, draw the people to them because you sent them. Lord, draw the people to them. Draw them from the north, the south, the east, the west of Omaha and beyond. Father, draw the people to them. Father, draw the people to them. Father, draw the people to them, people to them. in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, mighty name. Father, we give you praise and glory. It is our month, our season of the days of heaven and earth. Father, I pray. That your people shall experience days of heaven on earth. Amen. Father, I pray that your people shall experience days of heaven on earth. Amen. Father, I pray that your people shall experience days of heaven on earth. Amen. Therefore, anything that is happening in their lives that is not a reflection of heaven, I remove it now. Amen. I remove it now. Amen. I remove it now. Amen. Be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Only days of heaven shall be your experience from now on. Even the negative thing that the enemy tries to do against you will all work together for your good. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord cause his countenance to come upon you. Both now and forevermore. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Somebody shout a glorious amen. amen. Let's share the goodness together. Surely the Father's goodness and mercies are following us all the days of our lives. And we are dwelling in the house of our Father forever and ever. Amen. High five three people and tell them you are blessed and you are highly favored. Love you. See you Sunday. Leaders, see you on Saturday.